out on a boat ride. Boat rides are great for video time, right? Uh, and you guys have been asking for a video with Josh as the vault guy to answer more vault questions. So I thought I'd start with kind of five questions for Josh the vault guy, which is what I called him for like 20 years <laughs> as I knew him and would, you know, when I was single, I'd come home from the cemetery excited that I saw Josh the vault guy. And then it would be like, ah, no big deal, Josh the vault guy. Like when I was married and stuff, but then single again, there was Josh. Josh the vault guy. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so let's ask him five questions about being a vault guy. Hello, everybody. So we'll see how good the internet is out here. So first question, we're going to have Josh tell us just a little overview on like how he started in the vault business, kind of what age he was and such. So we're going to do a little camera flipping during this. Right. And I don't have sunglasses, so I'm a little squinty, but it's all right. Are you on me now? You're on okay. me. All right. I didn't know. That. Right. <laughs> well, I got into the business and started working like in the precast concrete shop where the burial vaults are made when I was about 14, probably 13 or 14. Uh, my dad owned the company. And so out of high school, I started working. Well, had some other jobs for about a year out of high school. And then a year after I graduated, I started working for my dad. And that's how I got into the business. And I've been involved in some facet of the business ever since. But the business that also entailed, I handled mostly the burial vault and funeral side of it. But uh, we also made septic tanks and dry wells and, you know, like parking blocks and just all kinds of precast concrete. But I ended up just gravitating towards the funeral setup side of it because that's where I was needed and did it for 26 years. <laughs> How long did you work with your dad? Like you worked alongside your dad kind of. Well, my, my dad, that, go? that was good. I mean, my dad was my boss, of course. And he, he was pretty much in the office and just ran stuff. Uh, and I started out on the lowest rung of the totem pole. That's how he wanted it. And I appreciate it more now, of course. But uh, I worked for him for eight years. And then he sold out to our competitor and I stayed on with our competitor and I worked for them for 18 years. So, and then after that, as you guys all know, I jumped ship here about a year and a half ago and started working at the crematory that is owned by the funeral home that Carrie works for. Did you and your dad make your own vaults? Yes, we made our own vaults. We, it was a precast concrete shop and we were actually the Wilbert Vault, which Wilbert is the biggest name in the funeral business. And my dad had the Wilbert licensing and territory for the area. And so it was an actual Wilbert Vault plant. And yeah, we manufactured all of our, our own vaults. We mixed our own concrete, poured our own concrete, all that good stuff. It was an actual up and running, you know, precast plant. Hey, flipping. Okay. Back to me. Um, so someone asked a question, said, hey, from the mitten. And hey, we're in the mitten. We're Southwest Michigan here. Um, wonder, do you have to have a burial vault? So it is not a law in the state of Michigan that you have to have a burial vault, but cemeteries require them. Most all cemeteries require them. There are greener cemeteries that may have specific sections that you don't have to have a vault, or you could petition like the township or city ahead of time to see if you can be buried without one, or you can ask about butter dishing. Butter dishing is where you take the base of the vault when it's a big bottom and you flip it over the top. So the casket, coffin, shroud, whatever you're being buried in. Hey, Jocelyn, happy birthday. Um, whatever you're being buried in can lay on the ground on the earth and then the vault goes over. That's also, and sets on. it's also called an air seal. An air seal. That type of vault, like the inverted vault with, you can either use a concrete slab bottom or no bottom. And that's what, the Muslim community in Lansing, I did a lot of burials up there and uh, that's, they were all air seals and they would physically some, two of the, two of the guys would jump in the ground and they would take the, the body that was in the shroud right. and put it on the ground. And then I would put the domed air seal over the top. Of What's it. the difference between a vault and a grave liner? Well, Clayton's asking. Okay. Hey Clayton, what's happening? Uh, 
a grave liner is just a basic concrete box is what a grave liner is and that means that it's not watertight uh, water can get in it's mostly just to protect the casket from getting crushed from something bad happening to it but unless you're in a sealed casket you know the body's going to get water in the casket with a grave liner an actual burial vault has a lined it's a lined unit and it's a tar based seal and usually there's a core in the inside of the concrete you pour the concrete over it you pour the burial vaults upside down and the liners you put a special epoxy on them and then slide them down into the form and then you pour the concrete over them and they harden overnight and then the next morning you come in and you hook a hoist to both ends of it of the uh, burial vault itself and pick it up off the off the core and flip it and then set it down and break the core, the form off it and that's your burial vault but those have a oh it's almost like a a pvc or plastic type liner in the base and in the cover and then there's a tar base seal around it and the weight of the t of of the cover when you put it down on the base it seals it and it's and it's watertight that's considered a burial vault so do you remember your first vault mm. it's like you're a Coors Light ad uh, right now <laughs> I'm talking I needed a drink sorry um, <laughs> I uh my first one I can remember the first one that I did by myself. I went out with a lot of the other guys as a kid. And when I actually, when I hired on with my dad, I was 18 or 19. And for up until that point, I didn't do a burial, you know, by myself. And I trained for about a year before I went out on my own and, and actually started doing the setups on my own, no help, whatever. Um, Ah, uh, the very first one I did. Yeah, I do remember that one. It was in Portage, Michigan. That's all I can tell you. No, it wasn't, it wasn't any big deal, but I can remember it. Talk about disinterment or exhumations and talk a little about your first one. Well, me, luckily, I lucked out because I, the unit that I used to do my setups with is I pulled a, a vault trailer the old schoolers called them Jennies, but it's a motorized cart that hooks up to your trailer hitch and it's got a front uh, like steering wheel that you, you know, you wind down almost like a boat trailer, but you can steer with that. It's got a motor on it. It's got usually a half ton transmission in it, an axle, and it's got a flatbed little trailer, but it's got a crane way that you can pull out and extend from the trailer. And so you have to put, you know, oak planks or aluminum planks or something and brace them on the ground around the grave so the weight's out away from the grave so you don't get a cave in and then you pull that crane way out and get it level and there's a hoist on the trailer and you pick the base up slide it out over the grave lower it down in same with the cover when you're putting the cover on um so i didn't have to do a lot of exhumations because those are done with a boom truck a knuckle boom truck now i was there for about Oh, at least a half a dozen of them probably that I helped on. And the first one I did was with one of the old timers that trained me. And I don't know if he'll ever see this, but Tom DeVries, shout out to Tom DeVries. But yeah, it was customary that when you were the rookie on the job, uh, that you kind of, you know, they like to play jokes on you, like laugh at you, just like any other blue collar job pretty much, you know. Uh, and in the base of that vault, was you know liquid water whatever and i had to get down in there and put a sling around the casket once they busted the top off the vault to pull the casket out and this was for a murder investigation so they were the me was there the coroner was there they were getting ready to rebag the body and take it back to the me me's office so that they could do whatever they had to do to it but oh yeah i touched that water and whatever you touch that's in that vault you throw away and the smell stays on your skin for a few days it's terrible but that was a that was a learning curve I, I never did that again but I got laughed at for that one for a while what's the grossest or nastiest thing you've seen while doing all that kind of stuff hmm. people like that question but I think it's so objective but, well I mean it kind of is but to me like doing burials and, and actually burying people in the ground in a burial vault, you really don't see the bodies a lot because they're in a casket. They're casketed. I mean, it'd be the 
disinterments, you might see some nasty fun. Yeah, I mean, that disinterment that I was just talking about that I got the yuck water on me and stunk for days and had to throw all my clothes away. Uh, the funeral director opened that casket once we got it out while I was standing there. And the body had been in the ground for like 23 years or something, 24 years. And it looked like he, you could have probably put him with a little little touch up of the makeup. You could have displayed him again in the in the viewing room. I mean, he, he didn't really look a whole lot different or gross. The only thing that was weird is he had like moss growing on the back of his head. That was the only thing that I noticed that was mold, moss, whatever. I couldn't tell what it was. But um, like gross wise... That just comes from working at the funeral home and walking down, you know, in the staging rooms, prep rooms when I'm getting, you know, bodies that are already boxed up to take out to the crematory and a lot of the things I've seen down there. I mean, that's... What do you call them? I call it nightmare fuel because it's nightmare fuel and only certain people can deal with it, man. So, because, uh, yeah, it's it's grisly. I mean, you see any it, any facet of of things because you're seeing people before they get embalmed you're seeing people when they're you know whatever happened to them that's how they ended up it's terrible so. um hey day by day so no josh is not my husband um josh and i've been dating a little over a year over a year it was a year in may so 50 14 or 50 months or whatever um he is a vault guy it's what he was for forever to me, Josh the Vault guy. And then he's been doing crematory operating for a little over a year. And so he has a lot of knowledge in a lot of areas that I don't do stuff in. Vaults, crematory, things like that. So we've pulled him in to do some really good question and answering with you guys. Uh, yes, he did Wilbert Vault's. My whole oh life. my gosh, Tiffany, that's hilarious. You have a vault guy named Josh too. Seriously, tell him he's going to have to be the number two Josh the vault guy then. Because <laughs> we got number one here. <laughs> so uh, you guys keep asking great questions about this. So throw some vault questions and Josh will answer them. Um, do they have like plastic, plexiglass type vaults that... I mean, you don't really, with Wilbert, use them. Um, Doric kind of no. has some. Well, but... there used to be, and I mean, and these were discontinued years ago, like a decade plus ago. Um, there were air, like air seal type vaults, like I was talking about before, with like a flat bottom and a dome top, <clears throat> where the casket sat on the flat bottom, the dome top went over it, that were uh, like fiberglass. And I, mean, I can't remember who made them, but I remember seeing a couple of those. And I, I never had to set any. Yeah, the we don't really have Doric in our area. It's, it's no, over everywhere. Well, I don't remember if it was Doric or Eagle or TriGuard or what company was that made that particular particular vault, or particular air seal. But, yeah, they those I didn't think were super high quality. That was just my opinion. But uh, the only other vaults that are not concrete that I have dealt with and super infrequently, like maybe three or four times in my whole career doing that, were our Clark metal vaults. And they got different gauges of metal, but that's the same thing. You got a flat bottom, a dome top, but they're fancy metal dome tops. I mean, and they're decked out with like special, you know, decorative handles, different colors. And those, once you sit the casket on that flat base, that dome top fits over and there's these little like hooks that come up and hook and snap down to hold that base up. And then you throw a sling around kind of the bottom. You need to be real careful because the bottoms fall out of those. But then you pick it up and then you put it all in the vault or in the ground at once. What's the biggest vault you've done? Me, probably a uh, normal size vault is, is considered a 32 inch vault. And that's 32 inches wide inside the vault. Um, the, and that fits, fits a standard casket. That fits a standard casket. And the next size up from that is a 34. And then you got a 36. And like with the vault trailer, like I had most of the time, the biggest thing that I could haul usually was a 34. Um, but now I've, there's another guy that I worked with for years then, and, and he had one of the knuckle boom trucks and he handed all the, handled all the oversized vaults, all the bigger people, stuff like that. And I've, 
watched him put somebody in the bottom of a thousand gallon septic tank to put them in the ground with a slab top on it because the I mean, person that's essentially what a grave liner concrete box is it's the same it's a thing septic tank it's just different shapes right it's it's the same thing because it's it's not a sealed unit it's just concrete and it's protecting the casket but yeah that person i want to say was like a thousand pounds 1100 pounds it was somebody that was you know just it was a huge person so but i and i've i've seen a few, few times uh people get buried in the bottom of a 500 gallon septic tank which is you know, I, if, if you've never seen it for perspective, I don't even know what to, what, you know, what yeah. to compare it to. But it's, it's big and it has to be a very big human being to, to, to have to move up to something that big. I can tell you that. Um, what's the worst? Tell us a cave-in story or. Cave-ins? Oh, oh. Like a really bad where you were in the hole, something like that. Well, I, I had just set a vault and jump down because I set it all in one. So it, the, what does that mean to set it? Okay, to, to set it means to put it in the ground, okay. in, in, in the grave. The grave's already dug out and you're setting it down in. So most of the time when I'm doing a, or when I was doing a, like a graveside setup, you put the just the base of the vault down in the ground and then you set up the fake grass, the lowering device, the tent, the chairs, everything around it. And so when the procession gets there, the pallbearers guide the casket onto the lowering device. And then when the service is over, I go over and I lower the casket with the lowering device down into that base. And then I pack all my stuff up, stuff up and get it out of the way, pull my trailer back up and then put the cover on the vault. But sometimes you seal everything above ground, meaning it's all on the ground next to the grave. You seal it all at once. And then you pick that whole unit up with the casket in it with a sling, and then you put it in the ground. And I did that once. And as I was going to get out of the grave, cause you got to jump down on top of the vault to undo your sling. And then you jump back up and, you know, pull your sling and everything out of there and move your stuff. But I went to jump back up and the ground gave way underneath me and I fell backwards and landed flat on my back and broke a rib on top of the vault. I've done that. Um, it has, it never happened to me personally, but I watched somebody have their setup made and an above ground setup means that you've got the base and the cover hanging on this device all the weight distributed on your boards that are around that grave which is 100 to 2,000 pounds sometimes and if the ground isn't really solid you can't do a setup like that and i watched a guy do one that on some shaky ground and once they put the casket on everybody step back in the burial vault that was hanging there the, the burial vault cover and the casket all just went boom down into the grave and just smashed into each other. And that was pretty terrible. So uh, that's probably the worst thing for sure. Cause you never want to see that. You never want to see something bad happen to somebody's loved one or, you know, the casket or anything like that. That's to me was always the worst was just to make sure that that person was taken care of and they got in that vault and it got sealed right with no dirt in it, with no crap in it. And it was, and it was done right. That just, that would, that was my biggest nightmare for the 26 years I did. It was something bad happening to the, to the casket or the casket, the blowing device strap snapping or something in the casket falling in and it's got to maintenance your equipment. That's all. That's what that comes from, not maintenance in your equipment. So what else do you guys want to know about vaults and vault setups and stuff? I think I asked five questions. Have I asked five questions? I, I had did. kind of a broad list and you guys have been and dropping I've been questions. <laughs> you guys have been dropping questions. Is it true that the orange light above the casket are meant to give a person a natural color? Yeah, they're called cosmetic lighting. So you're going to have some that are pink, some that are oranger, some that are redder. Um, if you need to, you could use like purples and greens and things. So if you look at the color wheel, let's say a person is jaundice, you look at yellow and you look across from it to what color is across from it on the color wheel. And that's what color you want to balance out the yellow with. So it's you know, you just want to give a little glow to the person without having to do heavy cosmetics. And sometimes that light is just the added little to how they're going to look. So um, thank you guys for your questions. They go really fast because we're on our phone. So do all cemeteries bury the husband on the left and the woman on the right? No, not all. But it is pretty traditional that if you stood the bodies up, that the woman is going to be facing the man, essentially. 
as if they were up at the altar. That's kind of where the woman on the left, man on the right thing came from, essentially. But it depends on if the headstone is at the head or the foot and if they're facing east, south, north, west, whichever way they're facing because they can face everywhere. All of it. So there's no one set way. So we actually recorded a video. Was that yesterday? Which one? Uh, Maple Hill. At Maple Hill? Yeah, we stopped yep. at a cemetery yesterday for our other channel called The Ick Factor, where we just do some little wacky cemetery visits and other just random things. And that cemetery, there was areas where the, the graves, literally within like a, I don't even know, a 20 foot square, there was headstones that faced every way. Some were completely cattywampus where they were like crooked. Yeah, it was weird. They were all over the place, all over. There was and no we got one. some kind of interesting, because we like to go and look for not just haunted, but like wacky things at cemeteries and stuff. And we got some interesting audio while we were there. In the, mi um, in the middle of the day. In the middle of the day, it kind of freaked us sun out. Um, so I'm going to edit <laughs> yeah, that video this week and post uh, it over on the factor. But yeah, what else do you guys want to know about Burial Vault, guys? And we'll throw them at Josh here. We're going to do just a couple more minutes. How about working in negative 10 degree weather? <laughs> uh, yeah, being, being a, uh, a vault man in Michigan, uh, working outside year round, that's kind of what made me end up moving inside was because I had 26 years of it and uh, it, it's killer on your body. It really is. I mean, my hands and my wrists and stuff, but yeah, it was rough. I mean, and you just, if you do it long enough, you got a routine and you know what you have to do. And so like in the winter, you show up, you find your grave, you get out immediately with your shovel and you start digging a, you know, a path to the, where you're going to have the graveside for people to walk. And then you've got to dig the snow away from wherever you're going to set your tent up at and snow removals first and getting your trailer or your truck in to set your vault first. And then after that, you're setting up equipment. You just keep your truck running, keep your heater on, and you go out and work as much as you can and get as much as you can done in a short amount of time and jump back in the truck and thaw out. And, I mean, honestly doing that, it's weird because once you do it for any length of time in the cold, you'll go out, man, your hands will hurt for the first half hour or so, but then you get almost so numb where you get warm, it's weird. And then you can just do your thing. You get used to it, but it takes its toll on your body after a while. I thought of two more questions for him. But I want you guys to know, so on your phone, when I'm doing this, your questions, when you post them, go by so fast. I saw something about not vault related, but I'm divorced, can I bury? Can I be buried somewhere? And I can't, they go so fast that it's hard to read. So repost your question if we're not answering it because it just means that I couldn't read through it. So we're gonna ask Josh, let's see. What, how, what is the most people you've buried at one single time? Like a couple, somebody uh, with kids? A, a couple, I've, I've helped. And usually when you've got a couple getting buried, They'll send more than just one guy out because to, to set the equipment up right, especially if it's side by side and the grave is two graves wide, that's super hard to set up over the top of and set up lowering devices over the top of them if that's what they want. And so, but I mean, I've done it more than once, but that's usually, that's usually two guys. Other than that, I mean, it was always a one man job, but those I've done probably three like that where couples have either most of the time it's a car accident, you know, or some tragedy like that. But, yep, so two for me. And I don't think, I don't think I can recall any more than two people getting buried at once, ever. I mean, in my experience, anyway. Um, Elizabeth Miller, you are welcome to come for a ride on this boat anytime <laughs> you'd like one. So you just holler and we'll get you to the boat to go for a ride, okay? Um, Clayton, you're asking about pricing. Every funeral home has their own pricing for vaults, every cemetery and stuff. So it's too wide. I've seen from 500, 400 even up to, you know, 
hundreds of thousands, not hundreds of thousands, dozens of thousands. What, like for burial for vaults? Vault. Me, for vaults, about the most expensive vault you're going to get is the, the one I think that Wilbur offers, and I believe it's the Triune still, or is it the yeah. Bronze? Well, the Bronze, I think it's a Bronze It's a Bronze Triune, triune. yeah. That, one's, I, that one, I think, retails for like ten grand. Wait, it depends on the funeral home. Right, it does. It depends on your... You could you probably know. spend up to fifteen grand on that same vault at a different funeral home. Or you could spend maybe nine on it. Somewhere. I mean, I don't know. But that's the most expensive burial vault that I know. And we never had to pour those as a Wilbert dealer. Those were always poured at the the home base in Chicago. And then we'd go get them. Yeah. Do you, have you ever installed like double depth or triple depths? No, I have not. I have put a, I've lowered a body down into a double depth. And I had to make sure I had extra long straps on the lowering device. Hold on. That light's just behind you, so you're yeah, really dark. No so we'll just yep. move a little nope. bit. No, but no, I, I mean, most of the cemeteries that we went to, they would not bury double depth. The only place I know of that did that, I mean, around this area is Fort Custer National Cemetery. And I've watched and I've helped them do double depths out there or been involved in it anyway. And the double depths are pre installed. Usually, so they're yeah. a, a lawn crypt. Yep. So when you have a pre-installed place of burial, like a mausoleum or a pre-installed vault, it's called a crypt because it's a place of burial. Um, and they do do double depth at the National Cemetery here to maintain space and to stack um, spouses on top of each other. Yep. I, there's nowhere around here that I know that does triple depth, but yes, you can if the ground allots for it. S some ground is just way too high of water table, especially in Michigan. If you dig down too deep, you get water. You just can't place that. And that and you've got to have, and you've got to have the equipment to to do it. Really, I mean, because not most lowering devices aren't going to go a double depth. You know, right? Uh, footage. I mean, it's just it. The, yeah. They're not made like that. And so. someone asked earlier, like, if there's a green there's burial. There's a rainbow over there. See it? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. If there is a green burial, if you need a vault company. So the only thing in that situation that the vault company could do is possibly help with the lowering straps and do the tent and chair setup. Because yeah. that's who does that portion. So... Vault companies are hired by funeral homes for urn burials, even because they may bring in just the tent and chairs for the memorial service. So, yep, it, it may not be that you're specifically doing anything with the vault, but you might want the yep. kind of graveside setup for everyone. So, talk about the oldest section that you've ever buried in. I mean, like how hard was the grave to, you know, keep there was, there, right? And hold on guys, I'm gonna try, flip you over to him. Okay. The, like the, you're talking about just oldest graves, like oldest. Yeah, like getting into up into an old section where things oh. are maybe not completely straight. Oh man, there's there's a few cemeteries I can think of and it's it can be a nightmare because of all the big old stones and some of the hills and everything else. And I mean, I don't know, you just, <laughs> you find a way, you find a way, I mean, one way or another, you figure out a way to get it up there. I mean, that's just, that was the job. So talk about the hilliest. What do you do on some of those? Cause we're well, talking like, well, for some, some of those, the only way you can set them is with the knuckle boom because and explain what a knuckle boom is. Again. Knuckle boom Great is mass. the articulating crane on the back of a truck that you can pick stuff up with. You see them on a lot of flatbed semi trucks or a lot of flatbed trucks, stuff like that. And so the, the boom truck, when you were on a hill or in a bad spot, I mean, if you could get the boom truck close enough to it to get that arm to swing out and set that vault, that's what you did because setting vaults on the side of a hill with a trailer like I had is, it's, it can be super sketchy. It's super dangerous sometimes. But again, if you know your equipment and you've done it long enough, you, you figure out ways. I mean, I sat up, you know, on, on the sides of hills like this a lot of times over in Ann Arbor. There's some cemeteries in Kalamazoo. 
I mean, there's there's a few places that when you when you hear the name of the cemetery, you di- you knew you drew, drew the short straw. You just go, oh, it's gonna be a rough day. So you just gotta be thinking. It's not. It doesn't take a lot of intelligence. It's just common sense and knowing how to distribute weight and having the proper equipment and making sure you're maintenance in your equipment right because you can get hurt quick. I mean, you got a lot of weight hanging there when you're lowering those vaults and stuff. I mean, and if you're lowering a vault with a casket in it and a vault cover, like I said, that's 1,200 to 2,000 pounds times. So. Someone just posted a question about why do military cemeteries not allow family? And then the question was done. So if you repeat it so I can answer it. The other channel, um, so our kind of a little more fun channel is called the Ick Factor, I-C-K Factor. So Josh's last name is Ickis. And so a lot of his friends always called him Ick. And when I first started dating, we didn't tell a lot of people. It was pretty quiet and didn't announce it on my channel at all. And so I did a video called the Ick Factor talking about the Ick of I guess dead people and then um Josh Wine I do love Josh Wine but I would say I love Josh Wine why do military cemeteries not allow family at the graveside okay perfect question and then where in Michigan can you go to mortuary school um but so the ick factor then we thought why don't we do a video where we can do a little some fun things a little more fun because if I do things a little fun on this channel, I get kind of heck that they're not professional and things, so which is fine. So I kind of deviated into another channel, which is a little more fun. Yeah, Dasha's hot. Mm-hmm. Hey, there ain't no question. You got to answer the question about the the military. Oh, I know. So why can families not watch at the cemetery? So I'll talk about our local national cemetery here. You used to be able to go to the roadway and watch burial of your loved one. Mm-hmm. During COVID, it changed. These are federal employees. It's not just a random cemetery. Ooh, the mushroom suit. I'm cycling back to that too. Um, and so during especially federal stuff with COVID, everything stopped. Like you weren't allowed even to like witness, you weren't allowed to do this, that. We had to go by what federal numbers were with how many people could be at the cemetery. But so if you think of a national cemetery, you go to a shelter, you do the service there, they then take your loved one over for burial. Well, they used to allow you to go and kind of witness the burial from the roadway. But what do people do? People don't just stay where they're supposed to stay. They encroach upon the space. They want to take pictures. They want to be part of it. So then you have staff that's trying to maintain distance from family and family who's encroaching upon the the space of your staff who are trying to do their job. So they had to just say, sorry, family's not allowed, period, to witness anymore. So it's a safety thing. And especially, so burials are done. They open up the ground however many graves deep for that day. So there could be six graves opened at one time. That's a huge lot of land that's opened up. The crypts are all buried. Those double depth vaults are all laid in the ground. That's a huge long thing. It's a lot of liability. Laura, who's to say where you got the COVID from? You can't say if somebody got it from a deceased or if they got it from the grocery store. However, COVID was found active on a deceased up to 90 days past death. So it's a thing. Now, what was the other question I was going to Oh, mushroom suit. No, not a thing. They exist. But when the woman was asked to provide any scientific anything, any studies and everything, could not provide them, could not show it, won't return calls, won't return emails. I've tried, other people have tried, not a product that you should buy into. Yep, that's the mushroom burial suit. No, doesn't, no. Um, this is funny. It's, it's a lot of products, it's like the big burial pod. It doesn't even exist and people are like, oh my gosh, I want that. Well, you can't get it because it doesn't exist, but all right. 
we're going to dial down. So thanks to Josh. I think he answered five questions, if not more. So thanks to Josh for all of his vault. Hey, no problem. Yeah, I knew knowledge. Thanks, thanks for letting me talk for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> um, we'll get to that next time, T.O. Fane. And yeah, keep questions coming. We'll do another live vault thing. This was not a specifically planned one. So we'll get some better laid out questions and pull some questions from this video that we didn't answer. And answer them next time. So thank you, guys. See you guys. Bye.